Hey, Roadrun Report, this is Sydney SM. Uh, actually, just had to interrupt my last recording because uh, Verizon called to give their post installation survey. It went pretty well. Anyway, I think I finally figured out how to use the R Action Tech as a Mocha to Ethernet bridge while maintaining the functionality of the set top boxes uh, for Fios TV. Uh, let's go into my internal router and uh, start looking at the configuration. Uh, now, this it's a Linksys Word 54GL running open work. Um, configured pretty normally. Uh, right now, the WAN port set to DHCP. And if we look at that, we can see that its IP address is coming directly from Verizon. We have no routing going on in this part of the action tech, which is <laughs> exactly what we're looking for. Um, I'll go into the DHCP client's view, where we have the action tech. Now, uh, this is actually the MAC address and IP address of the action tech's WAN port. So uh, that's actually that turned out to be the key to getting this all working, and looks like we're going through remote administration to look at its settings. All right, uh, as you can see here, it does think it's connected to the internet, except of course the IP address is not from Verizon; it's from my network. Um, it's happy. <laughs> Let's go into the network view and look at network connections. Now uh, here's the bridge. The, the uh, home office bridge that's making everything work uh, at the first stage. It's bridging our broadband connection, our COAC, our MOCA, into... Uh, actually, this is a, a VLAN, the first port on our Ethernet switch. Uh, most of the instructions for this you'll be able to find in the, f in the original post of this thread, but um, this part of it, well, let's take a look. I'll go into the Ethernet settings, you know, summary, settings, and at the bottom here, I had to show the four-port switch. Um, by default, this is hidden, and all of these would be set to um, blank, the PVID and the VLAN IDs. Uh, so I'll edit the first port, and hit add at the bottom here, and add VLAN ID of one, and then I have to set the ingress policy to tagged, set that VLAN ID to one, and apply the settings. For now, I'll just hit cancel, though. Then back at the uh, network connections view, which we'll be back at in a second, we have to go down here and hit add. We choose VLAN interface and go to the underlying device of uh, Ethernet, not broadband, not any uh, broadband connection. Ethernet is the default, but we need to go Ethernet VLAN ID one. And when we actually add this, for now I'll hit cancel because it's already there we'll find Ethernet 2 at the bottom of this view, which represents port 1 of the Ethernet switch. So we've just separated that out from ports 2 through 4. Then I go back, add, or actually this isn't really necessary, I'll, let's do it a different way. I'll go into the network home office bridge, set that up, and down here Ethernet 2 will show up, we just have to check that off and enable spanning tree protocol for it. Uh, okay, I don't believe there are any special settings here. Um, you might want to note that there's no IP address set for this network that may have been in the original post that ensures that the router, the, the action tech doesn't interfere with our internal router getting an IP address. Then I'll go back out. Really, that is pretty much it. Um, Coac, we, we ha we've connected the first Cat5 cable between that switch port 1 here and our router, and a second Cat5 cable from one of the switch ports on our router to the WAN port. That's broadband connection Ethernet. As you can see, it shows connected. I'm not sure if, if any settings really need to be changed here. I know mine was disabled. Um, you'll have to enable yours, clicking here, and apply that. Settings are pretty normal. There's no IP, IP address distribution, which is normal for a broadband connection interface on this router. And I don't think any ch settings have been changed in coax. Uh, that's, again, neither of these are in a bridge. Uh, it's, it's just being routed normally. It's, the router is getting its internet connection from here and then creates separate networks for each of the, for the Ethernet switch for coax. Um, it, it, did, it assigned itself dot two for the coax network. And if we look down here, right now only one of the set-top boxes is connected, but it's been given an IP address 
um, at, by the uh, DHCP option 60 setting the, uh, in the Verizon firmware, and I uh, killed the power to both set top boxes, plugged them back in, and after about half an hour, both of them were completely stabilized and completely functional. If I've left anything out, just tell me, but good luck to, to all who have Fios TV.